Hello again, everybody, and welcome to Power Pro Wrestling. I'm Jim Ross. In the next 60 minutes, we're going to look at some of the most exciting professional wrestling action that we've ever had the opportunity to bring you. Of course, everything focused on the big April 19th showdown in the Superdome, the Jim Crockett Sr. Memorial Cup Tag Team Tournament, winner take all $1 million. And speaking of that, we'll see the Road Warriors. They have to be one of the top seeds in the tournament. They'll be on television here today on Power Pro Wrestling. We'll also see our big main event here on PPW, the paint match from the Sam Houston Coliseum in Houston, Texas, that features Steve Kern of the Fabs against Chavo Guerrero of, of course, the Guerrero Brothers. A lot more action coming your way. We're going to focus on tag team action. We'll also see Coco Ware. We'll see Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert's Giant Russian in just a few moments. And later in the program, we're going to bring back a piece of tape that I know for a fact that Master James E. Cornett better known as Jim Cornette, would like for us to forget. We'll have that for you a little bit later in the hour, so don't go away. And right now, let's see the giant Russian, Korchenko, in action. Beautiful Oklahoma City Myriad is the site. Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert's Korchenko going in action against Perry Jackson. You can hear the fans chanting, USA, USA, and... Kurchenko has definitely been a catalyst for the fans to get patriotic recently. He, he and the Sheep Herders both. Betty Gilbert doing the honors for ring announcer Craig Stansberry there. Well, there you have the ring in introductions. Perry Jackson against Kortia Korchenko. A massive Russian. You see referee Tommy Gilbert checking those furry boots and the large heat knee braces. As I was saying before, the people are really being patriotic lately. Due, in fact, to the sheep herders and, and this man here. For Steve Kuchenko, Kuchenko uh, motioning to referee Tommy Gilbert that he's perhaps ignorant of the rules. I think that's just a ploy as Kuchenko goes immediately to the attack on Perry Jackson, clubbing him with those huge forearms. This man's powerful. You have to give him that. He's methodical, definitely. I don't know if he's if he's agile or not because I've never really seen him tested so far in the agility department. Everybody he's been up against so far, he's just manhandled him with his brute strength and power. You see him continuing this onslaught. Listen to Eddie Gilbert. Eddie Gilbert uh, kind of inciting the fans a little bit, but I think uh, he could have a point there in the fact that Kostea Kurchenko is undefeated so far, and I don't think it's going to be too long before he gets to taste the challenge of one of those men that Gilbert mentioned. Terry Taylor, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, Dr. Death Steve Williams, Ted DiBiase. People really beginning to cheer. USA, USA, as Kostea Kurchenko Goes into, it looks like he's setting for the rear backbreaker that he uses. He goes into it kind of out of a pile driver position. And Perry Jackson is just helpless. Both of his arms are pinned back against his shoulder blades. And there's a sudden impact in the upper vertebrae to Perry Jackson. You can see that he has just decimated. Kirstia Kurchenko 
gains another victory. He's undefeated so far. Let's go back to Jim Ross. Cortico at 350 pounds with an easy victory here on Power Pro Wrestling. He, I guess he's the biggest Russian in professional wrestling today. You know, Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert is leading his career as he is the Blade Runners. We'll see them later in the hour. But perhaps the forerunner, the prototype to the Blade Runners were the Road Warriors. And we'll see the Road Warriors in action right here, coming up next. Saturday night, April 19th, $1 million will be on their mind and their manager, Paul Ellering. And uh, we'll be focusing more on the Road Warriors in the upcoming weeks. They're an awesome team. In just a few minutes, we'll be looking at Coco Beware, the Birdman, after our first network timeout. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Power Pro Wrestling. Thanks very much for being with us. Please join us every Sunday morning, 10 o'clock, right here on Channel 26 for Power Pro Wrestling. Now, ladies and gentlemen, a big event in Hammond, on, that's going to be coming up on Wednesday, April the 12th, the Bunkhouse Brawl in Hammond, the University Center, along with Fan Appreciation Night. We'll be telling you more about that on upcoming Power Pro Wrestling programs. Well, right here in New Orleans at the Lakefront Arena. It's going to happen on Monday night, March 24th, 7.30. Lakefront Arena, nine great matches, three championship showdowns, including the NWA World Tag Team titles on the line. The Midnight Express, the manager Jim Cornette, returned to New Orleans to defend against the legendary Rock and Roll Express. It'll happen on Monday, March 24th. Plus, Hacksaw Doug and Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer and I Quit Showdown. Terry Taylor against Dick Slater, order back for the North American title. Ted DiBiase and Dr. Death against the Chief Herders for the Mid-South Tag Team titles. And there's a lot more I'll be telling you about in the hour, but right now, let's hear this from the Mad Dog. What's Mid-South going to come up with next? They got this I Quit match, a match I never heard about nothing in my life because, see, since I've been this tall, I've been growing, I've been beating people, I'm getting beat up. I ain't never quit it, nothing in my life. I'm a go-getter. They got this stipulation. They're gonna check us when we get in the ring. When we get in the ring, we're gonna both be searched. Well, you ain't gotta worry about me because anybody knows Mad Dog Bus Sawyer don't need a chain. Dude, we know you need that two by four, but you see, you can't have it. And then when we get down and we get dirty and we get nasty and it's man to man and they're sticking that microphone in your ears and in your nose and in your mouth and you're screaming, I quit. You know, I don't care about that search and stuff. Check me all you want. I know the position from way back. But the thing is, is they're going to take a microphone, they're going to stick it down in your mouth and somebody's going to have to say, Somebody's going to have to say that they quit. And I quit is not in Hacksaw Jim Duggan's vocabulary. Many times since I've been here in Mid-South, I've had this nose right here mashed on in. I had this eye split open. I had this ear torn, and I wanted to give up. I wanted it to finish, and I was laying there with that crimson crawling all over my face, and I look out there, and I see one of my people saying, Hacksaw, fight on! Hacksaw, get up! And by God, I get up, and I fight on! So, Sawyer, you're going to quit, tough guy. Rob Ricksteiner going up against Coco Beware, the Birdman at the Oklahoma City Myriad. Craig Stansberry about to make the ring introductions. One fall or 20-minute time limit is Rob Ricksteiner 
looks eager to get his hands on Coco Beware and get this match underway. Rick Steiner, a powerful young man with a lot of potential. He was a great amateur wrestler. He knows the basics as well as anyone and can execute them as well as anyone. As Coco Beware goes to shake hands with Rob Rick Steiner. Rob, he may know all the fundamentals and be a great pure athlete, but uh, not much of a sportsman as he wouldn't shake hands. And now Coco Beware with a hip toss on Rick Steiner. Rick Steiner looking a little disgusted there. Coco caught him right off the bat. Collar and elbow tie up. Rick Steiner goes to the headlock. Coco Beware getting some velocity off those ropes. The two men crossing, jockeying for position, and Coco again catches him with another hip throw. And Rob Rick Steiner's complaining to the referee about uh, Coco using the tights. And uh, a pretty ludicrous assumption on Rob Rick Steiner's part. But Rob's learning. He's, he's trying to use a little psychology here and there in his matches. And if you're watching Mid-South Wrestling recently, you saw that uh, Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer has taken Rob Ricksteiner under his wing. Kind of wondering what's going to happen and come out of that. Buzz Sawyer would be a great coach for Rob Ricksteiner. They're such good similar athletes. I don't know if he would exactly lead Rob in the right direction tactic-wise. You see Rob Ricksteiner again complaining to the referee that the tights were pulled, but Coco with a clean hip toss. But Rob Ricksteiner's back to the mat once again. Coco's got such a lot of fire and so much energy. His matches are really exciting to watch. He's so quick and powerful. He can hit you with that drop kick at any time. One drop kick that sticks out in my mind as being really powerful was that one he executed on Gustavo Mendoza in Oklahoma City. Coco really connected with that one. Coco with the arm bar and twist now. Rick Steiner lying flat on the mat. You don't want to be in that position, so Rick Steiner gets back up to his base. Once again, Coco muscles him down with just using that top wrist lock. The top wrist lock may not look like much, but when your hand's being bent back against the joint, stretching all the tendons, it can be extremely painful. Render your whole body immobile and have a residual effect throughout the match. Tommy Gilbert having a few words with Rob Ricksteiner. Ricksteiner seemingly not want to get in there and mix it up with Coco, trying to psychologically wage this war. Of course, you're going to see a lot more psychology on matches on Power Pro Wrestling because the time limits are longer than a normal television match. This one in particular is twice as long as a normal television match, being that the time limit is 20 minutes instead of 10 minutes. And look at this action. Coco Ware with a leapfrog. And a couple of hip throws once again. Rob Ricksteiner has been introduced to that move several times. And Coco does the bird off into the back portion of the ring and Rob Ricksteiner is wondering at this time just what's what it's going to take to shoot down the bird man he gets back into the ring signaling for a timeout the referee Tommy Gilbert reminding him that there are no timeouts in wrestling back to the collar and elbow tie up Coco beware take it Rob Ricksteiner into the ropes, the turnbuckle area. Tommy Gilbert tries to break it up, and man, Ricksteiner with a cheap shot off the ropes, and Coco's hurt. Coco, I'm sure, was not expecting that one. Ricksteiner, really powerful, just flat waylaid him. Ricksteiner's quick to the attack. He's being extremely aggressive. Good sign from this rookie. He continues the onslaught on Coco. Body slam. Look at this, Rob Ricksteiner making fun of the bird. You just better watch him. Coco just clobbered Ricksteiner. 
Coco will wrestle you, brother, but when you want to fight, he can do that too as he shows Rob Ricksteiner, just who has a little more experience in that department as well as Coco takes Ricksteiner to the turnbuckle. Reversal. Coco fakes and looks like he's going to go for the drop kick. And man, he, he laid another one on Rob Ricksteiner. This is going to be it. One, two, and three. Coco beware, the winner of this match at the Oklahoma City Marriott Center. The Birdman gets another victory. Let's go back to Jim. Thank you, Joel. And ladies and gentlemen, that was a great matchup from the Myriad in Oklahoma City. Coco Beware and his thundering drop kick from the second rope. It really planted Rob Ricksteiner, and he's a great young athlete. Coco Beware is flying high and in just a few moments. Big runners of Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert with a victory, and their victories are a little bit unusual in as much as that they're not real polished but they are awesomely strong. And Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert is really uh, putting that team together, and I think that they're going to be the team of the 80s. They are big, they're young, they're powerful, and they've got Hot Stuff in their corner who obviously will interject himself at any time. The Blade Runners, well, their progress, much like the Road Warriors at a comparable time in their careers. Now, that phone number, if you would like to charge your big tickets, to the Superdome Wrestling Extravaganza on Saturday night, April the 19th. If you live outside of Louisiana, you may call 1-800-535-5151. If you live in Louisiana, please call 1-800-228-3944. That's for Visa and MasterCard purchases, and we'll be right back for the main event of today's Power Pro Wrestling, the paint match after this. The opponent... And this likes out grudge match, no time limit, no disqualification. The loser to be painted yellow, weighing in at 228 pounds from Mexico City, Chavo Guerrero! So there you have the introduction. You see Chavo Guerrero carrying inside the ring with him. A uh, can of yellow paint and a paintbrush. Because wrestling fans, you're about to witness a lights out match. Called lights out because this match is actually taking place after the regular card, professional wrestling card here at the Samuels Coliseum, the home of Houston Wrestling. The winner of this match will be able to paint the loser yellow. It should be a tremendous showdown. One fall to a finish. Your referee is Tommy Gilbert. My name is Peter Burkholz. One fall, no time limit. We keep in mind that the winner will be able to paint the loser yellow. A lot of bad blood between the fabulous one, Steve Kern, who you're seeing in your picture right now, and his partner, Stan Lane, against Chavo and Hector. A lot of bad blood, but in this particular match, it's Chavo Guerrero on his own. It's Steve Kern on his own. Both men's reputations riding on the line tight match that has a lot on the line because nobody, nobody wants to be painted yellow in front of a huge crowd in the Coliseum as well as a huge television audience. The bell sounds in this lights out match between Chavo Guerrero and Steve Kern. The winner will be able to paint the loser yellow and as a give and take. We are probably not going to see too many wrestling holes in this hole, this match because Chavo is absolutely bang. He wants to make sure that Steve Kern gets painted yellow like the coward that he is, according to the quote of Chavo Guerrero. So that quick outburst results with Steve Kern outside the ring. Referee Tommy Gilbert administering the 20 count. There will be a winner. It's a one fall to a finish. As the winner will be able to paint the loser yellow. So don't you dare go away. Chavo Guerrero, the oldest wrestling son of former great Corey Guerrero. Chavo has two other brothers wrestling at Hector and Mondo. But right now, Chavo, has, he's a man who's carrying the Guerrero banner into this match. Every time he steps inside the rope, Chavo is fighting on a lot of pride. So Steve Kern, finding that Chavo is ready for this match, sights up, is trying to Unside Chavo by slowing down the pace of this match. Steve Kern, one half of the fabulous one. 
one of the highest rated tag teams in the country, but when you talk about high rated tag teams, you've got to consider the international ranking of Chavo and Hector Guerrero. So Steve Kern willing to make a beat greedy, but Chavo has waited too long for this opportunity as he stretches the back of the leg to hamstring of Steve Kern. Chavo driving that boot right in that same back of the leg that he hurt with that stretch as we've got Chavo working on that left leg. This match taking place in the same Eastern Coliseum, the home of Eastern Wrestling, an arena rich with professional wrestling tradition. Chavo now wrapping up the leg. He's got Kern reaching for the rope. That Indian leg lock. Chavo trying to get to where he can put a little bit more pressure on, but he's got Kern right where he wants him. Every time Kern tries to raise his head, Chavo there with a forearm. The referee firing a question to Steve Kern. As the shoulders are down, one, two, but Kern had enough going on in his head to make sure that he came up before that three count. A rip across the eyes, and that's a tough thing to take. There's no way you can defend yourself against that. There's no muscles in the eyes to develop or to toughen up. It's one of the most vulnerable parts of a, the human body. So as they get close to the ropes, the referee calls for the break. Kern rolls outside onto the concrete floor. Chavo now a little bit irritated, trying to put some pressure on the referee, Tommy Gilbert, to keep Kern in the ring. Chavo knows that every time Kern gets outside the ring, he's getting a rest period, and that's what Chavo wants to prevent. Kern continues to try to drive down, slow down the pace of this match. Chavo's ready to get in there and mix it up. Kern outside the ring, Chavo impatiently forces him back in, picks up where he left off. As the uh, opening minutes in this lights out match between Chavo and Steve Kern have been going all Chavo's way. Look out, Chavo's got those legs, he's got that weight. And as he leads forward, this is a hole that's tough to take. Wahoo McDaniel used to use this hole called the Chocosaw Deathlock. But what has happened here is that we have got Chavo Guerrero wrapping up Steve Kern. We could have a submission here. Chavo's able to hold on to this hole, increase the pressure, because that, 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 this particular hole has your body going into different directions, into directions that the body was not meant to go in. Now Chavo shortens it up into a backbreaker as he continues to put the pressure on Kern. We'll be back with more of our Power Pro Wrestling main event after this timeout. On the turnbuckle, as he tries to return the favor to Kern, who introduced him to the ring both early in the match. Chavo on top. We've got one. We've got two, but we do not have the third count. Chavo Guerrero feeling the effects of the punishment during the match. So is Steve Kern. A battle to an absolute winner. Chavo lifting up high and a beautiful back to back. We've got Chavo on top. We've got one. We've got two. We almost had it. We almost had the third count. Chavo is now the man insisting that Tommy Gilbert, the referee, counts a little bit faster. A lot of punishment given out. Both men have taken a lot. As Chavo showing no mercy, as he has used some of the tactics that Steve Kern has used early in the match. Back on Kern, a little dose of Steve Kern's own medicine, as Chavo feels like that's only fair play in a nose qualification match. Right above us, it's Kern on the rope. It's Chavo who's denying Kern entrance in the ring as he wants to make sure that Steve Kern does not get the needed rest he needs right now. Setting him up and beautiful as he drove Kern into the mat. 
Chavo. As fans, thousands of them, cheer on Chavo to turn him over and pin him. They want to see Steve Kern painted yellow as Kern still feeling the effects of having his face driven into the canvas. Cracho and slam. Chavo on top. We've got one, we've got two, but no three. Both men groggy, both men showing the effects of a hard fought battle as both men fighting with everything they have. They're reaching down deep inside because they uh, don't want to be painted yellow. As that shovel now reversed it. Back, five, we got two, we got three, we got a winner. Shovel the winner, the winner of the match. The beautiful black back slide. Mixing up the paint. Steve Kern down on the mat. As Chavo Guerrero pins Steve Kern. One, two, three. Chavo the winner. Right above us. Steve Kern is loading his fist. He's loading his fist. Coming up on Chavo. Get Chavo. Chavo caught that loaded fist right on the chin. So Chavo topples to the mat. Steve Kern picking up, trying to pick up the paint. Tommy Gilbert explaining to Kern that it is he who's going to be painted yellow, not Chavo. So now Steve Kern hits the referee as he throws the referee outside the ring. Steve Kern loaded his fist. He slugged Chavo. He just attacked the referee, and we've got a battle. The match is over. Chavo has won. The battle with that power driver. Chavo got turned out on the mat. Turned out on the mat. And the battle of the back ready to do the painting. There's Stan Lane. The other half of the fabulous one. As fans try to warn him, Chavo catches Lane in the midsection. It's one Chavo Guerrero. It's two fabulous ones. As Chavo attacks Lane, Kern attacks Chavo. Chavo, bravely, courageously, fighting both fabulous ones. The referee is down. As Chavo is helpless against both fabulous ones. The match is over. Chavo was a winner. So he, he should have been entitled to paint Steve Kern. The referee calling for the bell. But right now, it's Kern doing the painting on Chavo Guerrero. The paint is going everywhere. Down on the mat, all over. And Chavo Guerrero fighting on instinct. He is covered yellow. He has been the winner of the match, but denied the opportunity to paint Steve Kern yellow. And down here we have a mess. Yellow paint everywhere as a fabulous one. They've done their damage, leave the ring. The fabulous one, Steve Kern, Stan Lane. They leave the ring, Chavo, the winner of the match, but denied the opportunity to paint Steve Kern yellow. This is a very controversial situation. Steve Kern was defeated by Chavo Guerrero, thus, Per the contract, Chavo had the right to paint Steve, but uh, that just didn't transpire as we saw. Be that as it may, next week here on Power Pro Wrestling, we will have the final match in this series featuring the Fabulous Ones and the Guerreros, this time inside a steel cage right here next week on television. And both those teams will also be in the big $1 million Jim Crockett Sr. Memorial Cup Tag Team Tournament on Saturday night, April 19th in the Superdome. These fireworks are far, far from over. And we'll be back with a look at something, as I mentioned earlier in the hour, that Jim Cornette would like for us to forget right after we come back from this timeout. Thanks for staying with us, everybody, here this morning on Power Pro Wrestling. Now, coming up on Monday night, March 24, 730, UNO Lakefront Arena, the Rock and Roll Express return to go for the World Tag Team titles against the champions. Jim Cornette's Midnight Express. The I Quit Showdown, Doug and the Buzz Sawyer, Terry Taylor goes against 
Dick Slater's been ordered back for the North American title. Get your tickets early for this one. And now let's hear this from Mr. Under. You know, I underestimated Terry Taylor. First of all, I was kind enough to give you a title shot, Terry Taylor, being the general number one contender. Second of all, you gave me a good fight, which I like anyway. I don't want to climb in a ring with a man that doesn't. That seems like if I beat somebody, then I'm really beating nobody. And Terry Taylor, when I beat you, it makes me feel good inside. Now, I know the North American Heavyweight Championship is a very important title. Most of all, it's the most prestigious title in this country today. But I said before, Dick Slater is a North American heavyweight champion, and he's got his mind on setting being the greatest of all. And Terry Taylor, I'm giving you one more shot for it, and that's it. Well, that, those comments are Mr. Unpredictable, but let's hear this from Terry Taylor. Being a champion in professional wrestling is the toughest thing in the world today. As competitive as our sport is, and when you have a trophy as prestigious as a North American title, everybody's giving you their best shot every single night. Right, Slater? Well, yeah, you got my best shot, but when the going got really hot and really heavy, you just decided it was time to bail out. The rules are designed to protect the champion. You have to either beat him or make him give up to get that title away. And Slater, you just take advantage of those rules. Just stretch him every time you can, don't you? Well, this time it's going to return, and I know what you're going to do, so I have to fight double hard to keep you in that ring and within the boundaries of the rules, because, yes, I think... I know in my mind that I can wrestle that title away from you. Because one-on-one, -on -one, I feel like I can beat anybody. That includes you with Dark Journey at the side. And I just think that if you and I get in there one more time, sooner or later, I'm going to put the pieces of that puzzle together, and I'm going to beat you, and I will be the North American champion. Thanks for staying with us, everybody. You know, from time to time, we enjoy going back into the library and pulling out a, a piece of tape that we think you would really enjoy looking at. Well, We've got a lot of requests lately because of the pending matchup between the Midnight Express and the Rock and Roll Express right here in the area. Of a celebration that Jim Cornette had planned that I attended as the, the host, so to speak. I... From at the hands of the Rock and Roll Express, the party, the party's over. The party is over. I'd like to be able to say something to Cornette here. Jim Cornette, I'd like to be able to get a word here. They're leaving. Let's go back to ringside of Bill Watson, Boyd Fair. Oh, boy, I tell you, I love it. I love it. Well, Jim Cornette uh, with a little cake on his face, and he has certainly not forgotten that situation. And the Midnight Express and the Rock and Roll Express, perhaps the greatest tag team rivalry in professional wrestling today. At least one of them, no doubt about that. Next week here on PPW, we will see the Blade Runners in video form. Joe Watts exclusive video on the Blade Runners next week here on Power Pro Wrestling. We'll also see the 350-pound Russian Korchenko in action. The Guerreros and Fabulous Ones, don't forget that match inside the cage, the fourth in our series. And in two weeks, we will have the matchup right here on television, the Midnight Express versus the Rock and Roll Express. Now, I'd like you to write the numbers down that you see on the screen. There are free numbers, there are toll-free numbers, 1-800-535-5151 outside Louisiana, and in the state of Louisiana, 1-800-228-3944. That's to charge tickets using Visa or MasterCard to the April 19th Jim Crockett Senior Memorial Cup Tag Team Tournament. Tickets are selling extremely rapidly, but great seats are still available in the spacious and beautiful Superdome. It's going to be a great show next week. Thank you very much for being with us for our whole crew here at Power Pro Wrestling. I hope you have a great week, and we'll see you next time.